Today, I'm going to be talking about leveraging existing Power BI data sets in a way that is not currently supported out of the box. Currently, when you connect to a Power BI data set on the Power BI service, it is going to be in live connect mode. That's going to limit what you can actually do with that data model. You'll be able to add additional measures, but you cannot add calculated columns or add additional external data sources like you could if you were using a traditional analysis services model. However, using a workaround to meet ad hoc reporting needs, you can actually leverage existing data models for those users that do not have edit permissions to the underlying data set itself and may not have access to the data sources. The first step in leveraging an existing Power BI data set is to actually pull it into Excel. This way we can flatten out the data, denormalize it within an Excel pivot table, and then use that table as one of our data sources for Power BI. Now certainly we could manipulate the data and report directly from Excel, but assuming we want to pull that back into Power BI and add additional data, we would start by analyzing in Excel. That's going to download a file for us, and now we can open up our data connected Excel file. As I open this up, it is going to be live connected to our data model, and I will be able to generate a pivot table to flatten out the data that I'm interested in. In this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in the total sales and maybe a couple dimensions from the sales territory. The sales territory country, the sales territory group, and let's restrict this by a time period. So I'm going to bring in the calendar year and for this particular set of data, the last year of data is 2008. I'm going to bring in all of 2007 and a partial year of 2008. Now, since 2008 is a partial year only, I need to make sure I bring in enough granularity that I can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the month as well. I now have a data set that is denormalized, but it's not Power BI friendly yet. In order to flatten it out into a simple table, I'm going to go into the pivot table design. I am going to turn off my subtotals first, then I'm going to turn off all my grand totals. I'm going to change my report layout to a tabular form. And then the last step is I'm going to repeat all items and labels. Now I have a table that's going to be Power BI friendly where I don't have to do a lot of manipulation in order to work with it. It's simply going to pull it in. The last step back in Power BI desktop is to connect and import the pivot table that we just created using the Excel connector and pointing to the file that we just saved we are able to access the pivot table that is connected to our Power BI data set. Now, as we look at the data in our pivot table, it is coming in in a nice clean table because of the way we formatted it. However, keep in mind that as I'm loading in this data, it is not pulling in a fresh copy of information from the Power BI service directly. It is only pulling in the static copy that exists within that Excel pivot table. If I need to refresh the data, I cannot do so from here. That is simply bringing in the same exact static copy. In order to get an updated set of data from the Power BI service, I have to go back to the Excel pivot table that is connected to the Power BI data set refresh it from there, and then once I hit refresh here, it will bring in an updated copy of that information via the Excel pivot table. However, the main reason we have done this is we are looking again to do some ad hoc data modeling and reporting off of that existing Power BI data set. And we do have that flexibility. I can now import additional data elements from SQL Server. I can bring in additional Excel tables, pivot tables, and join that data to this ad hoc model in order to meet my immediate reporting needs. I hope this simple workaround gives you added flexibility in being able to leverage your existing Power BI data sets. At some point in the future, I don't think this type of workaround is something that's going to be necessary and that we will be able to import an existing Power BI data set and add additional data elements to it natively out of the box. However, in the meantime, using a simple workaround such as this will allow you to get more out of what you have already built. Until next time, this has been Azure Everyday. 